Hello and welcome to Hack Attack. My name is Joko Pak. I'm your host and you're watching a Hack Attack episode. So in this video, I'll be showing you my method of processing audio from a Skype conversation. You see, I recently started interviewing developers over Skype and the audio you end up with captured from Skype sounds pretty harsh. And so you need to process it a lot. Now, this is actually part two of a two part series. And in the first part, I'm actually showing you the hardware setup I'm using to actually record the Skype conversation itself. And if you want to see that part first, then you can click this card up here or go find the link down in the description. I'll also make sure to link to that video at the end of this episode. But if you're still here, that means you want to see how I process my harshly sounding Skype audio. And so let's get to it. Now, first we need something recorded, but that's already done. So the next thing to do is to make sure that the audio is listenable for an extended period of time. One thing that is going to be really apparent when you do these interviews over Skype or over a phone conversation is that the audio is going to end up being really, really sharp because you're losing all of the low end of, of the frequency spectrum. And there are lots of um, frequencies between 1000 Hertz up to 5000 Hertz that get uh, almost enhanced. And this also depends on the type of microphone that is being used on the other side. This is the original audio audio from Bram right now. Uh, so this is the actual Skype conversation that I recorded. Background is, uh, is, is, is as a designer, I, I learned how to code when I was 10. My, my dad, uh, he was background is, uh, is, is, is as a designer. I, I, I learned how to code when I was 10. My, my dad, uh, he was background is, uh, is, is, is as a designer. I, I, I learned how to background is, uh, is, is, is as a designer. I, I, I learned how to. So you can clearly hear the improvements being made with these effects here. So what do I actually have? Well, I have a studio equalizer and you can see I've done some pretty rough work around 2000 and 3000 Hertz. I'll show you why. Really early 80s and he was a really a, a believer in uh, you know, the possibilities and the importance of, uh, of, of computers back before everyone had one. So he said, you know, I'm, I'm going to buy you a computer um, <clears throat> at the condition that you learn how to program on it. And I've As you can see, there were some really sharp frequencies here and those needs to be removed in order to make this listenable. The next thing I did was I put a compressor in here and you can see that I've got the threshold really low. It looks as if I'm completely killing the signal with compression. I'm not because the original audio was recorded at a very low level, which is a problem in itself. You should always try to get a recording when you initially recorded to try to get as loud as a level as you can get without it actually peaking or distorting because then you've got a better noise floor ratio. So whenever you have noise and hiss and stuff going on in the background, when you start processing a file with audio being as low as this in level, then when you start raising the level of the audio, you're gonna start hearing that hiss and that background noise and, 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 and everything. So uh, try to get the audio in as loud as possible without it distorting or anything. The thing is, I've grown a bit comfortable here because I'm using a plugin called free from Clevger. And this is an essential app to have if you're working with videos, if you're doing a lot of narration. And that's why I've put it after the compressor because the compressor actually raises the volume. And so when I'm doing that, I'm also raising the noise and, and hiss and everything. And so I'm cleaning it out with Bruce free. After that, I've got a de and I'll show you exactly what it's processing. This uh, is, is is as a designer, I, I, I learned how to code when I was 10, my, my dad, uh, he was, and this, this was really early 80s, and he was a really a, a believer in uh, you know, the possibilities and the importance of, uh, of, of 
As you can hear, I'm processing the higher frequencies even further with the deesser, and the deesser is an essential tool too, especially if you're a content creator, you do not want your audio to sound too sharp. I can't even begin to emphasize how important that is. There are so many channels out there with great content, but their microphones make their voices sound really sharp. I actually stop watching videos when the uh, sound is too sharp. So this is an easy tool to use in order to save those recordings, you know? So when I've done all this, I reference the audio in uh, several headphones, uh, like mobile headphones, crappy headphones like these, my studio headphones that I'm using right now in order to reference myself. And then I play it through different speakers, like my stereo inside the living room. And I just need to make sure that stuff isn't too sharp or too bassy or anything like that. When I'm satisfied, I export it. So I bounce it. So I bake all of the effects into the audio file. And that's what we can see here. So that's the result of all this processing. If we take a look at the uh, insert effect slot for this channel, we can see that I'm processing it even further. So we have a look here, we can see we have another studio equalizer. My dad, uh, he was, and this, this was really early eighties and he was a really a, a believer in, uh, you know, the possibilities and the importance of, uh, of, of computers back before everyone had one. So he said, you know, I'm, I'm going to buy you a computer um, <clears throat> at the condition that you learn how to program on it. And I thought that was a good deal. Um, so uh, that's why I learned how to code at a really young age. And I've been doing it ever since. And, you know, it was, it, it was fun. I, I didn't particularly like the coding itself, but the fact that I, you know, whenever I had an as you can see, I'm filtering off a lot of frequencies there again that makes the audio kind of rumbly and jar-like um, and sharp. And the next thing I'm doing is I'm compressing the audio just slightly. I'm not raising or gaining the volume. Um, and then I put another espresso on here. So I, my dad, uh, he was, this, this was really early 80s and he was a really a, a believer in uh, so it's compressing it and, and just keeping those S's in check. The last thing I've got here is a Waves Q10, and this is an equalizer. Now, I could have just used a um, Cubasis equalizer like this one, uh, but it only has four bands. And since this was the final stage for this file, I wanted to have more bands. And that's why I'm using the Waves plugin, the Waves Q10, since it has 10 bands. And again, I'm having to filter off some of the rougher frequencies around 4000 Hertz, just slightly removing them. Now, when all of that is done, I then went to work on my own narration. The reason I do this uh, in together with Bram's narration is because it's easy for me to space out how the interview is going to look. If it's going to be in a video, I need to know exactly what section is where and where to put certain graphics and stuff like that. And I also need both audios to be just as listenable and just as loud as each other uh, in order to get an even audio uh, output. That's also another thing I can see a lot of content creators do. They forget to go over all of the audio and then suddenly you get loud music and and low volume narration and stuff like that. That's uh, really unpolished. And if you just spend a little more time on it, doing stuff like this, making sure that everything sounds the same, then it's gonna make your content better. When all of this is finished with all of the narration, I then go into the mixer and I add a compressor to keep both audio levels from both my narration and both Bram's uh, interview piece in check. And then I maximize it with dithering. And I'm gonna make a video on what dithering actually is and why it's good. So um, that's basically what I do. And so I export all of this and then I can bring it into LumaFusion or whatever app I'm gonna use it in. And when I'm done with that, I've got a really, really neat audio. It's maximized and it doesn't sound too sharp or anything. So that's the amount of work I actually have to do with all of these bits in order to make an interview uh, sound good enough. Probably not in this shape and form. I'm fairly certain that things will change. Uh, Apple, they are a very fickle bunch. The, the mobile music community is very much developing still. Uh...
And there you go. That's how I do it. Now, I will be keeping on interviewing developers. I've got loads of questions and loads of data to collect. I want to know the future of apps, what developers seem to think about the future of apps, where we're heading and what's coming up next, what they think Apple might do, you know, stuff like that. Really interesting stuff. Well, at least I think it's interesting. Now, if you haven't seen part one yet in where I'm showing you my really contrived uh, heavily overly complicated hardware setup to record Skype conversations, then I do suggest you go watch it. As usual, link down in the description and also at the end of this episode. Now, if you want to help in securing the future for this channel, if you want to support uh, good content and creativity, um, then why not at least consider joining up on Patreon? Now, if you don't want to do Patreon, I've got a PayPal me link so you can do a one-off donation. And if you don't want to do that, then why not buy my latest just a track. I'm pretty fond of that track myself, actually. I, I listen I listen to it myself when doing the dishes and stuff like that. I, I don't usually do that. Normally, I get tired of listening to one of my songs when I'm finished with it, uh, like instantly. But this one just seems to grow on me. I like it more and more and more. And it would be so nice being able to take time uh, to to make uh, like a like an album full of music like that. Yeah. Either way, if you don't want to buy tracks, so support me through paypal or patreon then you can always share my videos which is really important and really helpful and also press the thumbs up because that really helps with the ratings around here um and remember to press in that little uh, bell thing if you decide to subscribe to this channel because that way you'll always get notified whenever i upload a new video now as usual i wish you a very productive week now go finger all of your stuff and have a lot of fun doing it